What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you that don't know, this is our $500 super cheap Civic build. We picked this thing up a few months back and as soon as we got it home, we started to do a manual swap, got this thing on Honda, and then proceeded to build the cheapest possible turbo kit that we could put together. And in today's video, we're gonna be breaking the entire build down. I'm gonna give you guys prices as well as go over some of the budget parts that we decided to use on this build and how they've been working out for us so far. So let's get through the intro and jump right into today's video. So now that we've gotten through the intro, I want to give you guys a quick breakdown on what this car is. And for those of you that haven't been following along on the whole build series, you can go back on the channel at any time and check out the Honda playlist. It's got videos from every step of the way where we cover everything that we've done to this car so far. So to start off with, this is a 1999 Honda Civic that we picked up for $500. And as soon as we got this thing home, we started on collecting parts to do the manual swap. So I hopped on Facebook Marketplace and I was able to find a full pullout from a guy that was parting one of these cars out, the manual transmission, shift linkage, intake manifold, engine mounts, as well as some other miscellaneous parts for $500. So we were able to use those parts and then pull our engine and transmission out to do the swap and sell that automatic transmission to regain $250 towards the build. Now, while we were doing that, I did decide to go with an XCD stage one organic clutch. We did put a new flywheel on as well while we were in there. I just wanted to make this thing's longevity be as good as possible. So once the manual swap was done, I was able to hop on Facebook Marketplace and track down a Honda S300 V3 for $500 that we were able to get wired up to the car. I used a cheap Amazon jumper harness, I think it was like $16, and it has been working out perfectly fine and serves as a great spot to tap in for the wideband or other outputs that you might wanna use the ECU for. So once we got it on Honda, we brought the car over to our boy at Stoll Innovations where we were able to run the car on the dyno with the new manual swap and on Honda to see what this thing would put down NA. I believe it made right around 89 or 90 horsepower. I was curious to see what it would make before and after we do the turbo kit. So once we were done on the dyno, we brought the car home and started to collect parts to put together the cheapest possible turbo kit that we could. So to start that turbo kit off, we found a cast manifold on Amazon for around $124 that we were able to bolt directly to our JDM D15B and match with our Max Speeding Rods TO4E Billet Wheel Turbo. We decided to go with a .57 AR housing because this is a little JDM D15B non-VTEC. I wanted to give it every opportunity to spool the turbo as possible. So then we decided to pick up a DNA motoring 38 millimeter wastegate to bolt to that cast manifold. And so far that has been working out perfectly. I believe it was around $60. So a super budget option for a wastegate. And we are controlling boost with that via a Mac valve that we also picked up on Amazon for around $30. Now all of these prices we will have in a sheet at the end so that you guys can see how much of this project has cost us as well as how much it would cost to do it cheapest bare bones possible and the optional parts on top of that. So make sure to stick around and check those sheets out. But the boost control was around $30 and then our wastegate was around $60. From there, we go on to our cold side. That was all made out of two and a half inch old exhaust piping that I had laying around from other projects, which leads down to a four inch core intercooler that we picked up on Amazon for $100. And that has as well been working perfectly fine for our needs. Then of course our charge piping leads from the intercooler up towards the intake manifold, but we needed a blow off valve in there. So we picked one up off of eBay for right around $35. And honestly, that's been working out all right. It did come with a nice little pipe so that we could cut our charge piping and put couplers in to mount this directly in line in the system. And it had a little flange so that the blow off valve could actually bolt right up. 
and it has been doing the job but it was a little bit finicky to first set up but it is working from there we can move on to the exhaust which again we used what we had laying around which happened to be three inch mild steel tubing i did decide to put a few v-bands on there for ease of service and disassembly but you don't really need to do that we did get a dna motoring adapter that went from our to4e five bolt flange on the turbo to a three inch v-band so that we could build off of that for our downpipe and then i put another v-band from amazon on the downpipe that connects to our full three inch exhaust just so that it's easier to take on and off the car now moving on to the fuel system once again we built it with some of the stuff we had laying around i had a walbro 450 sitting on the shelf from another project so i decided to use that and make our own hot wire kit using a relay that we had sitting on the shelf and just wiring in with terminal connectors other than that most of the fuel system is pretty much stock stock lines all the way up to a stock rail and stock return with the stock fuel filter still in place now one of the few things that we did have to upgrade for the fuel system were the injectors so we hopped on facebook marketplace and i was able to find a set of generic 500 cc bosch core injectors they came with top hats and we were able to get those for 50 dollars i cleaned them up myself on our little workbench and so far they have been working out great now once I got them home and got them cleaned up, we went to put them on the car and I realized that I needed an adapter harness. So we hopped on Amazon and were able to get a harness so that we could plug from our stock injector plugs directly into the new injectors. They were only around $9 for a set of four. So that was a nice, cheap, easy option. Currently, we are not running a fuel pressure regulator, so I don't know what our fuel pressure is, but the car runs perfectly fine and we don't have any drivability issues but I would recommend getting at least a fuel pressure gauge on there just so that you guys know what the system is actually doing. We also wanted to add a catch can to this setup. So once again, we went with an Amazon option. They are right around $60 and I've used them numerous times in the past on other projects. And as long as they have a baffle, they usually work out perfectly fine. So that's what we decided to go with. And once again, it's been working perfectly fine for us. So that leads us into final assembly where we ran into one of our first issues issues with one of our budget option parts. So I decided to go with PLM for their four bar map sensor because they had a decent price. Now I don't want to bash the company too hard because they were really good to work with and very quick to get back to me with some sort of resolution for our issue. Now the issue we were having is we could not get the map sensor to scale properly in the Han data. They were very quick to send us another sensor to try that out, but we had the same issue, which leads me to believe that they have an issue with the batch that they had received, but they were very quick to refund us so that we could get another map sensor on the way. So that left us needing a new map sensor. I decided to go with the Honda 4 bar. They are about double the price, but when we got it plugged right in, we were able to scale it and everything has been working good as far as the map sensor is concerned. So once we got the map sensor all figured out and taken care of, this thing was finally ready for its first start and to get it on the dyno before we could get it out on the street and have some fun with it. But we didn't stop there. Keeping with the theme of this build, I wanted to try to build the cheapest possible water methanol injection system. And we accomplished just that in our last video using the stock windshield washer pump and a 1.5 gallon per hour water spray nozzle. We have it plumbed in pre-turbo and it has been working out perfectly on this combo so far so with all of that being said we have pretty much covered this entire build i'm sure i'm forgetting to mention some little things like the oil feed and return line from the turbo but i spent a lot of time making a list so that i could make a sheet for you guys so that at the end of the video i can show you these and break these down so that you can see exactly what it cost me to build this car as well as what it would cost you to build this car if you had none of these parts laying around and what parts were optional and what parts you actually had to have to make the car function like the map sensor you could run it on a stock map sensor up to about 11 psi so i wanted to make a nice detailed list covering fittings everything so that you guys could see exactly what you needed to get one of these cars up and running with boost but before we take a look at that i want to show you guys some clips of this thing on the dyno and us out on the street having some fun with it so let's take a look at those right now and then we will take a look at the charts <laughs>
now that you guys have gotten to see some clips of this car on the dyno and us out on the street having some fun with it you can tell that i really enjoy driving this car i have a lot more fun with it than i ever thought i would to be honest and for the amount of money that we are into this whole project i have been extremely happy it's a completely stock engine and it's a super light car and it is a blast to drive it works out really well and i would definitely do this combo again so like i mentioned earlier in the video i sat down and spent a lot of time thinking and trying to come up with a full parts list on this whole car looking the car over and everything and i think i've got it narrowed down to a pretty good list i might be forgetting some small things but i tried to incorporate everything that i could think of so this first list is going to be the parts breakdown for the manual swap to get this car from automatic swapped over to manual this is everything that we had to buy to make that swap happen now this next list is going to be a list of optional parts that you don't necessarily need to get the car up and running like the turbo blanket the boost control and the honda 4 bar map sensor as well as some other things that just aren't really necessary or a necessity to get the car up and running because you can run it to about 10 or 11 pounds of boost without a map sensor and you can also run it on a wastegate spring instead of using a boost controller setup then our last list is going to be the total parts breakdown for this whole project. Everything that we use to put the turbo kit together and get it running and functional on this car. Whether we had it on the shelf or not, we put it all together in a list so that I could give you guys a total. Now, a lot of these parts I had laying around on my shelf, like the fuel pump, the intercooler piping, things like that. But I tried to find a fair market value for the parts that we actually used so that I could put this chart together for you guys. I'm going to try to make a link for these charts that I can put in the description down below so that if you guys really want to take a closer look at it and check out our full breakdown. So make sure to check the description below for that link. If I can do it, it will be there. But as always, I appreciate you guys for checking out today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and check us out on all of our other social media. Facebook, TikTok, and Bought to Build Official on Instagram. And we will catch you on the next one.